this is actually called the evaporator. The ammonia comes down this evaporator, and guess what it does? Okay, you pass the test, it evaporates. So what I did was I put a piece of tape on each one of the screw holes, and the whole idea here is so that I can see where the screw is. And so you can use masking tape. We just happen to have some white duct tape. What I'm doing is, is I'm going ahead and using one of these self-tapping screws and each one of these to go ahead and run the threads through. Now the whole idea behind what I'm doing here is, is that once we put the cooling unit in, I'll be able to see to line up the screw holes because otherwise it'll be a black void. Now again, these are these are all the uh, tips from the pros, you know. So you're going to be a pro here. Now you'll see again. I don't have to do all of these screw holes, but you can see that the, where the screws go in quite clearly now. What I did was I clipped the end off of my tube. I used a great big fat nail to uh, take and open up the end of this. And so you notice how much thermal mastic I'm putting on here. And the intention of putting so much thermal mastic on is, is that when I put it in, it will take up all of the space that's in there because uh, there's no such thing as a perfect manufacturing process. So I'm going to get down in here between these tubes. You see how I dug out down there. So I'm just going to do my first pass like that because this tube's thick enough that it's going to need two passes done. So and again, this is why I dug all the foam and all the old thermal mastic out is, is I want a really good seal here. So I'm gonna make a nice thick layer of this because this, this is where all of your cooling occurs. And if you don't use the enough thermal mastic in here, I mean, the thermal mastic's inexpensive, and just use the stuff for what it's for. You don't need to worry if some of it squirts out, so what? So now you can see exactly where the evaporator tube is. And you can see the plate that's welded to the evaporator tube. Uh, it's kind of secondary. And the reason I say it's secondary is, is that generally there's not a lot of welds that hold that plate onto the tube. But you want to get right parallel next to the tube. And because we've got a great big tube of thermal mastic, I'm going to go ahead and put thermal mastic on this plate but I'm not gonna put it where the screws go through because that way I can see through the hole. Now you can use a putty knife to, to do some leveling of this if you like. It's up to you. Uh, you know, a little inexpensive putty knife from the hardware store to make them a plastic. I mean, you don't even need to clean it up. You can just throw it away when you're done because we've got a disposable society. We don't care about the environment. We just throw stuff away. So again, I'm, I'm getting everything all nice and gooped up here regarding my thermal mastic. And again, I, I can't emphasize enough that what this does is, is it takes up the space between the evaporator pipes and the aluminum plates inside the refrigerator. And without contact, you're not going to get cooling. 